Keep it farming with AIM Agriculture. Guys, look at what I have for you today. Look at that. You might think that this is a carpet. No, this is not a carpet. Imagine one bag of chicken feed, chick mash, is 4,500 shillings. That means that one kg is 90 shillings. All right? But here, you buy one kilo of barley at 50 shillings. Prepare it. In seven days, you have seven kilos. How do you get the seven kilos? Just using water. And this one is called the warm tea. One kilo, 50 shillings, giving you seven kilos in seven days. That means that every day, your one kilo gains one kilo. So, if you are to feed an animal with the same amount of feed bought from the shop, that would mean that seven times 90 equals to how much? And if you were to use this feed on that same animal, you would give it seven kilo of feed bought at 50 shillings. That is why M Agriculture is here and that's why M Agriculture will always bring you the surprises you will never expect. If you are new to our YouTube channel guys, kindly hit the subscribe button, like and share. We are here at Nourisha Farms to get educated and understand how they grow the hydroponic fodder to feed on chicken, pigs, cattle, sheep, goats, and any other new ruminant animal on their farm. Hello everyone, my name is Langat Kipkimoya, a pharmacology practitioner as well as a pharmacology trainer. Today I'm going to teach about the growing of uh, animal fodder as well as also how you multiply your feed from the normal feeds we have. Now, the, the most requirement when you want to do the hydroponic is the structure. And why the structure? This is because this is the, the site whereby it encloses everything you have. And the structure you have must be bad for what the rat proof and the like. Especially it could keep away those animals, the birds and the like which normally come and uh, eat the seeds. And then also in that the, the same structure uh, far is especially according to your desire and also the number of trees you want to put in that area. So, and then for the racks which you build, it should be slightly uh, slanting. It should not be steep because uh, if, you, if it is steep, you will, uh, the water will uh, just drain and then run off of, of your seeds or sometimes carry your seeds which you uh, put them in the trees. And then also in those trucks, uh, in those trees also you have, you, it must be either from the fiberglass, either the plastic or even the aluminium one. Because if you use the metallic, it will rust and then we don't need the rust especially in our food because it might cause some poisoning and whatever. And then also with these trees, we have the holes here. The main reason is for uh, drainage. When you water them, it should allow water to pass through to the next one and then also out. Why? This is because if it is waterlogged, then 
your seeds will rot instead of germinating all of them will rot and then you'll uh, make a loss and then so that is why the the, the side with the hole should be facing this uh, slanted area, not at the top area. And then also, the good thing with this one also, you arrange them in such a way that when the first one train water, it will train water to the next one. And then it goes all the way to the bottom one. And then also, that is why we have also the gathers at the bottom, whereby the water is also recycled. It will go to the farm whereby you want to do other things. So here, when you see the slanting side it will determine that uh, it will tell you that the aeration and the moisture content which will remain with your seeds is the right one and then also with the roofing you don't need the direct sunlight because whenever the seeds are uh, germinating they will uh, they have uh, they'll cause that uh, scorching effect because the sprouting uh, sprouting plant normally have uh, uh, delicate uh, tissue so that is why it will uh, get panned or scorched hence you will not have any products or any fodder in your farm so that is those are the things which you must consider and then also for the wind and anything it should be well ventilated it should have a low light to come through because we need light especially uh, for them to grow to the desired size so this is the barley which uh, these are the barley seeds and uh, here in this packet I have five kilos of uh, barley which will uh, fit into five trays and each trays will take only one kilo of barley. So the first thing about the barley, um, the first thing we are going to do is to show you how we start the, the whole process. First of all we soak it in water and when we soak it in water you just measure uh, the, your content Put them in a one packet like this one and then the next thing now is to add water so this is the water here i'm using the rain water and you make sure that all the seeds are submerged so when the seeds are submerged the way you see so that is now when you leave them for at least four hours or 12 hours so you can choose either way of doing it you can soak them uh, overnight or you can soak them in the morning and then in mid morning you train the water so you after adding water like this one you leave them for a minimum of four hours and then later on you train the water but it will depend if you want to leave them for 24 hours 12 hours uh, it will depend and then also so after soaking them you just allow them for four hours and then uh, you come later on and then you train the water from the one you've made like the one we have there so what we have here is the bucket so with this bucket they have the holes here so this one is just to allow the water to seep through and then we have uh, our soaked barley so this one is the one half soaked for more than four hours and then the next thing now is to train water so you put them in the packet with the holes like this one and then uh, so you allow to train water so if you train water today it will mean you are going to plant this one tomorrow in the trees so it will stay like this one for at least let's say 24 hours before putting them in trays so we have this one now and then after a day you'll have uh, one like this one I I trained water yesterday but if you keenly observe you'll see some new shoots they are turning white and then you'll see some new roots generating so with this one we normally put them in five uh, trees so the trees I have here are the fiber trees you can la uh, you can have either different one like this one with this the aluminium tree this the aluminium one and then also this is the fiber one so how do i measure one kilo of uh, but normally when you soak them the kilo normally multiplies or hard itself by half that is after suck, uh, after soaking in water and then so one kilo you'll have almost one and a half kilo of soaked barley and uh 
I have this half cut, uh, half cut container, which normally takes only one kilo, and then also a half. So after soaking, you'll get one and a half. So that is an additional uh, mass from the previous five kilo. So in one kilo, you'll have one. So this one is one kilo. And then you put them in trays like that and then half. So in one day, in one tree, it will take one and a half. Previously, I soak one kilo for one tree, but you'll have an extra half that is after soaking. So when you soak, you make sure you line them in a straight line yeah, like this. I'm sorry, we normally use the sticks. Uh, this one for lining. So you'll have something like this. And you make sure that they are evenly distributed in your trees. The way I'm doing. So this one tree. Like that. Then this done. So after putting them in a tray like this one, the next thing now is to water them. You keep them moist. So this one tree done. Like this one. And then, so the next thing now, after putting them in one tree, you water them. So this one tree. And uh, I'm putting in a flat area, but... Uh, in our setting area, we have them slanting to train water. So we have this one now. So this one tree. Hope you are keenly following. So this is our source of water. So for the start, you don't have to put a lot of water, just a small. Just to keep them moist a bit. And then you allow them now, you allow now nature to take its own course. And um, you make sure you water every uh, morning, mid morning, and then also in the evening. You water them three times a day. So if you observe them, this is a uh, one day old. This one we did yesterday. But if you observe kindly, you'll observe that uh, they are now starting to root. You'll see a lot of roots at the surface. Yeah, you can see the white stuff. This is one day old. And then, so with this water we have also, we normally add some nutrients. So, but the nutrients we normally use is the warm tea, especially from the uh, the red ricket worms. So from that red ricket worms, we normally put them in this uh, metering uh, cage, like that. That's the warm tea. And then, we allow this one to mix on its own. So this one works as a hand sprayer as well as a automatic mixer. So you twist this one and then you, you train like that. So you, you can see how it mixes. So this is how we can add some nutrients to our, our seeds, which we plant. And then after, uh, after doing that for a period of seven to eight days you'll have something like this so this one have taken uh, seven eight uh, seven to eight days so you'll have something like this it is a carpet and then so whenever you want to harvest them what you'll do is to roll them you'll roll them like this and in every kg after planting. The first thing, uh, the cane you get from uh, planting this or through this uh, process is that you gain another, an additional extra kilo or mass from the one you, you've done. After soaking, you get another half kg. And then after they sprout and grow for a period of seven days, you'll get another about four kilos or another five kilos. So that is why in every roll of barley or uh, hydroponics, you'll get about seven to eight kilos of feed, depending on how you, 
you water them. So what matters most is watering because they are hydro. They use water to grow. This one is rich in nutrients, especially because we have the roots. We have also the, apart from the carbohydrates, that is from the seeds, we have also the vitamins, which are there in this green, uh, green part of, the, of your pasture or your fodder. So that is why it is good especially to grow them this way, unlike when you are growing the, uh, you feed your animal using the seeds only. How are you, Buona Lanat? I'm good. Aim Agriculture is so happy to be here at Nourisha. You are most welcome. I've been so, so, so shocked. And guys, if you didn't watch a 100% organic farm, this was my first time ever in my career to ever see a farm that is producing 100% organic vegetables, fruits, and everything. I even enjoyed the organic breakfast. Asante sana. Hey, most welcome. Now, I just want to ask a few questions for the sake of my viewers because they won't have this opportunity to ask you. You've taken us through the entire process yes. of how one can make his or her own feeds cheaply at home. Now, you said you can substitute wheat with barley, with sorghum, and uh, millet? Yeah. Millet. Wow. What duration does this fodder take to mature? Okay, especially from the day day one, that is when you soak them, mm -hmm. and then to the day you harvest. Mm -hmm. So it will take, for the whole process to be complete, it will take seven days. Okay. Yeah, and in these, uh, in these seven days, that is the maturity period of that um, product you are, or the fodder you've grown, the one is for the sprouting, and then it will go all the long until the final uh, stage. Yeah. Good, good. Now, this fodder, it's mature at seven days. Yeah. You give it to, you say pigs, yes. cows, yes. chicken, yeah. and other animals. Do they have specific sizes for specific animals? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, normally, they do have, especially if you are growing them for the poultry, yes. you can allow them to grow for five days. Five days. Five or six days, and then you feed your poultry, because uh, the, the, this one will not be such long. Yeah, but if it is for the normal animals, you can uh, grow, allow them to grow for uh, seven or eight days. But even though it has grown to seven days or eight days, uh, other animals like the chicken, poultry, geese, and name them. They all love them very much. Guys, yeah. note this. For poultry, it is five to six days. For the ruminants, yeah. it is seven days going forward. Thank you for that. Another question. I've seen in the structure you have a temperature, a thermometer. Does it mean that there is a specific requirement in terms of temperature for growing this fodder? Yeah, sure. Because uh, normally when growing fodder, we need a certain specific temperature. It should not be high, mm -hmm. low. So we normally make, uh, I think that uh, 30 or 23 degrees Celsius is the right one, but should not be low. Also, with the temperature uh, which we have there, is to determine the media, the, the, the internal temperature within the structure. So it is also to guide you, especially when planning on how you grow your fodder mm -hmm. inside. So that is why you have that thermometer, mm -hmm. you know, so that you don't do the guesswork, you don't know that, uh, what is the temperature inside here and outside. So that is why, if it is very, very hot, if it is very cold, you know what to improve. So that is why we have that thermometer. Okay. Yeah. Now, a good look at your structure. I can see it is actually it's well ventilated. Sure. With the wire mesh. Yeah. Now, in the event that the temperatures go very low, how would you rise them? 
Would you tie curtains and drop them like we do in Chica? Or how do you do it? Okay. Um, normally, when the temperature grows, uh, so the trop, uh, what normally occurs is the, the duration for growth is slightly slow down. Wow. Yeah, we will have that with uh, the crop. Okay. And normally, we are using the natural system. So, that is just to guide you especially to know how you plan your fodder. If it will take, uh, if it normally takes seven days, you know, if it is very cold, that means it might add up to eight, nine eight. days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but normally seven to eight. So, it will only for you to guide you especially in the side of planning. Yeah, but we don't uh, close the Yeah, we know the temperature varies, but some are natural, and we are doing everything in the natural way. Wow. Of course, we are in the tropics. We don't expect the temperatures to go very low, but we expect them to go a little bit high, which I believe you can control using the 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 the, 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 the irrigation gun. Yeah. However, this one draws a question. While I was keenly listening to you, me together with my viewers, uh, you mentioned that after, you know, after spreading the the barley on the tree, yeah, you water. Yes. But uh, Mr. Langat, one may ask: from that first watering, then what is the watering cycle like going forward up to day seven? Okay, uh, I'll start with the day one. Mm -hmm. Day one, you'll just it is like they moistening them because they don't have the roots mm. uh, to make them compact ah. to each other. So if you over overwater them, then you are training or you will allow water to carry all the seeds you ah. to the base. Mm. Hence you will be doing maybe tedious work at a ah. time. And uh, maybe after watering, after day one, then from day two, uh, day two you make sure that the water and then you see the water dropping, especially from there. Uh, in holes, uh, breathing holes we have at the, at the lower side. Mm -hmm. So that is the main reason why you have to water a little, maybe moisten them on day one to allow them to grow. And then on day two, you make sure that you water until you see the water uh, dropping from one tree to another. Wow. This is a very interesting technology, our viewers. And this is AIM Agriculture for you. Each day, something nice, something amazing, to bring you the great minds like Mr. Lanat. A final question, Mr. Lanat. During the introduction, you mentioned to us that after you build the structure, you build the, the rocks. The rocks, yeah. And these rocks will have slopes. The slope will be crisscrossing. For example, if the upper rock is slanting on the right side, the second one will slant on the left side. Okay? So that the water now can fall from the upper tree to the next one, then to the other one to the other one, right? Yes. Now, this one takes me back. Does it mean that because the water is moving from the upper tree to the lowest, yeah. does it mean that you only have to water the upper one or you'll water all of them? Okay, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, when it's land, and then when you water the top one. Yes. Normally, especially in Pamakaja, we believe in recycling yep. rather than wasting. Yep. So if we were to water them and then all the water just flow, go the waste, then we are doing uh, something that uh, we are do really doing nothing. Yep. So, but when it flows from the top one, to the next one, so if you water the top one, and then you forgot to water the rest, mm -hmm. then they are still fine because the water will flow mm -hmm. from the first one to the second rug to the last, uh, the bottom one. The bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but sometimes you need also to water, after watering the top one, mm -hmm. you know, the second one will need little water, mm -hmm. unlike the top one, mm -hmm. because it will still get water from the top one. Okay. And then watering, uh, the rest also is okay to, for making or ensuring that the water is evenly distributed in the trees, mm -hmm. in each tree. So, okay. Make sure you water everything. You water yeah. all trees. All trees. So the but the, the top one should have more water ah. than the bottom one. Very well. Guys, I think we're getting that right. Water all trees, but water them in a reducing manner. Is that so? Yeah. Um, that was my last question. But because we are here to learn, and we are so much eager to learn, eh? yes. I would ask one last question. I've been reading lots of articles from school up to where we are, 
on uh, this hydroponic fodder. Yes. But we've only been being told just water. All right? Yes. Here at your farm, I've seen a newer technique or technology whereby you tell me, I've seen water coming from the main tank. Maybe you can just help me the watering gun. Yes. So guys, this is the watering gun. This is the main pipe supplying you water from the main tank, right? Yes. But here, you've got something like a dozer, a dozing tank, right? Yeah. This one, you've said you've introduced the warm tea, especially from the worms, from the vermiculture, from vermiculture, the red vicular worms. Uh -huh. So this one is the dozer that has been introduced to the warm tea, all right? Yeah, so it's now, like the foliar. Ah, okay, you have answered my question even before I ask. Oh, sorry. No problem, no problem, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. So, so it means that, uh, go ahead. Okay, normally in Pamukadja we designed to be lazy, so that is why when we call this uh, this uh, shower head, yes. then we saw that it is uh, fine because uh, Instead of just mixing the water and then come and then add it to your tree, it is the easiest way to do it. Yeah. So if the only the only nutrient supplement yes. that has been put on this product to get this carpet like thing is the warm tea. Yeah, it is the warm tea yes. and then also don't forget yes. normally the rainwater contains some nutrients. So yes. that is why we are using the Rain water here, yes. and then also the warm tea is the foliar to fertilize or to boost the growth of the uh, hydroponics we have. Ah, yeah. ah, okay. Every day I learn something new. So this is rain water. Yeah, we are using rain water. Guys, underline that thing. Get that secret. Rain water. Yes. Does it mean that? You only have to have rainwater, or it means that if you have rainwater, it will perform better. Okay, normally, <laughs> uh, salinity always affects the growth of most of the crops. So mm -hmm. that is why we are using the rainwater here. Yeah. And uh, also, when it, when we have the saline water, that is from the hard water, especially from the borehole, and you know this area, the Majakos County, most of the water here is salty. Yes, so yes. when we have salty, water normally affects even the seeds because you will find that most of the seeds can start rotting because of the maybe too much salt and whatever. So having uh, this uh, pure, uh, let's say, soft water normally assists in most, uh, especially in the crop, as well as also uh, the nutrients which is contained, especially normally the rainwater have uh, yeah. nitrogen. Yeah feels through lightning and whatever. So that is the main, the main reason why we are we prefer rainwater to uh, saline water. And uh, it is not a must that you have the rainwater. We normally advise people to use the readily available material or water in your area. So it is not limited to rainwater. Okay. But it is just advisable. Okay. Yeah. I think maybe guys we can say rainwater is of much value. Why? During the organic farm tour, uh, Madame Cullen mentioned to us that she really focuses on harvesting rainwater. So that means that these guys enjoy water from the first rains of the year. And you know what the first rains of the year come with? They come with something called nitrogen flash. Yes. Is it? Yeah. Then the other beauty about rainwater is the concentration of minerals. Remember that plant nutrient absorption from water on the soil is some as a result of osmosis, some as a result of diffusion, yes. some as a result of uh, active transport. These scientific processes sometimes are reversed by the concentration of minerals in the medium or the nutritive media, which can be either water, H2O, yes. two hydrogens, and one oxygen, or whichever nutrient you're using to supply. Yes. Wow, guys, it has been a, the best of the best learning experience, Mr. Langat. I'm sure I cannot ask all the questions. Is it? May, you are also welcome to ask, maybe in future. Yeah. <laughs> the best thing one can do is, if you feel like you, can, you want to be trained, this farm is in Machakos County. 
the school Nurisha Farm. Nurisha Farm. From Nairobi CBD to here, to the main road, is how much is a, how much is a vehicle to Machakos? Let's say 150. 100 or 300 shillings here. Yeah. Let's give it 300 shillings. Yes. If you want to take a direct vehicle from Nairobi to the highway, it's just 300 shillings. You are like that small world. At Small World County Club, then you find your way to the farm, 12 kilometers. Guys, this is the best place for someone who wants to be trained on urban farming, yes. on permaculture. The and organic if farming. you want to learn about organic farming. farming, this is the place to be. Zero fertilizer, like zero. When I was coming, I was told that here, zero. Zero fertilizer. We love you all, guys. We can't wait to see you. Be here for training and let me know. How much is the training? 2,500 a day. It includes food and accommodation. Oh my goodness. It's like some of the hotels we spent in a double or triple that. But here you'll be on the farm. Get trained, eat, and just enjoy your stay. I love you all, and this is Emma Agriculture for you. Wait for the next surprise.